Twisted Fusion, I think is a pretty darn good team looking at their history in terms of this these tournaments already. Uh, they've been doing pretty well, so I'm curious to see just how they're going to be doing because they're going up against SK Gaming. Yes, they are at that. I'm trying to see where they came through in the bracket. NLM, TR, I'm not sure what all these mean. Deus Aqua as well, so they've taken out quite a few teams. Nylum, actually, one of the teams that they defeated. Oh, okay, so they're a pretty, pretty darn good team. I believe I've seen them before, but I don't recall what their vic uh, whether or not they won or not. I believe they lost to... That might have been the one where I lost, uh, where I watched them lose to Fnatic. I might be incorrect on that. But right now, in May, they've got a 60% win rate, so that could be enough to deal with SK Gaming. Looking at the drafting so far, they've picked up Vala and banned out Kael'thas, whereas SK picked up... Anybody surprised? Nobody surprised. Nobody surprised. <laughs> Nobody is surprised about the fact. First pick from SK Gaming happens to be a new Barak. I mean, if it's not broke, why fix it? That's they've true. they've done such a great job with that new Barak so far. They also have Jaina, and they chose to ban Sylvanas on Cursed Hollow. A uh, very standard ban there. But Twisted Fusion have Muradin and Brightwing. And that's going to be pretty nice for them. Again, they've got that Brightwing to disengage from the Anubarak. Whether or not they can actually do it is the question. SK Gaming, they're on Cursed Hollow. What are they going to go for for their next couple of picks? We saw Sergeant Hammer last game, but I don't think we're going to see him again. Her again. No. It again. It. Thing. <laughs> tank. I do like to note that Twisted Fusion did pick up the Brightwing, and that's something that SK have been have been running to a lot of success. So now they're gonna have to adapt a little bit and Twisted Fusion forcing them to do so with that bribing and picking up the Muradin as well. Very strong draft from them so far. Okay, so they've got Jaina. They're gonna go for the double warrior, calling it already. Once mm -hmm. you get that Jaina, you don't wanna let anybody get close to her. So you're gonna probably pick up that nice little extra warrior and just make that nice little wall it's just kind of been the meta ever since healing ward has gotten nerfed and the warriors got a little bit of change material coming on in here and that's going to be a double blood for blood as well at level 16 malfurion going to be their healer yeah so can't have the brightwing going to have malfurion and now we'll see if they're able to make him work as their opponents so far have had some difficulty with that but some good roots here on Cursed Hollow can make a huge difference because you often get into fights in weird locations on this map. Locations that are less than ideal. And if you're able to root somebody down, take them out very quickly with a Judgment or even a Nubarak going in. Jaina throwing damage on top of it. That could quickly turn the tide of a fight. Now, Twist and Fusion have two picks left. Do you think we'll see them go for maybe a two more Assassins here? Do you think they will go ahead and pick another tank to try to deal with the double tank, or at least go against the double tank of SK? That's going to be a really good question. I really don't know Twisted Fusion style enough to actually be able to make a really good decision on that one. Mm -hmm. They definitely need to pick up one more range, whether or not they're going to pick up a double range, or maybe a range in a melee. They even might even go for something like a Zera tool to probably try and take out that Jaina really quickly. Uh, they don't have the Uther though, so I don't think it would be a Shadow Assault Zera tool. The question is, are they going to be going for maybe like a Zeratul's Void Prison something and start trying to focus the rest of the stuff? Because Void Prison's very strong on Cursed Hollow. You can throw it down even to just zone your opponents to pick up a tribute really quickly. And you can focus the rest of your might somewhere else on the map because Void Prison is lasts for, I think, just about enough long, uh, a duration that you can actually channel a tribute in. So it could be something that they do something like that. It's a cheeky strategy. I believe we saw a number of months ago. But, ooh... Nice! It's Zagara! I love oh Zagara. man. We haven't seen, I haven't seen her in a long while. She was like all over the meta and then kind of left for a little bit, but I'm super excited to see her come back. She has so much utility. Her creep tumors provide so much vision, which is definitely awesome. You'll see a lot of those tumors around the locations of the tributes, but then also she deals a ton of damage. Hunter Killer is so great to put on somebody they have. They're forced to like run away from it if they're squishy or try to deal with it, try to target it down really fast. And on top of that, she's she's just a great all-around fun specialist to to watch as well. I just love Maws. Maws are like my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> they don't really have a lot to really follow up with the Maw though is the issue. And that's Rain of I Vengeance! Guess, well, Rain of Vengeance is going to be pretty good, but in terms of just raw, ridiculous AoE damage to really mm -hmm. kind of spell that into a, 
into a death or into at least some sort of massive team fight advantage. Because with something like Malfurion, as soon as a Tranquility is popped, or if Malfurion's actually even caught in them all, but still, if a Tranquility is popped and he even uses Ice Block, it's going to be really difficult to wi uh, wither somebody down without... Huh. Hmm. Okay. I can see this, maybe? That's an interesting pick, picking up that Illidan. That is a really interesting pick, picking up that Illidan. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with it. Well, at least it's going to provide a good spot for him to metamorphosis in. I mean, the Maul will pull, as ho they're hoping a few people in, and then from there he'll be able to jump on top of that, especially if, like, Malf were to go in to make sure to heal the people who were in it. But that is interesting. I mean, they, they only have that one tank. It's up to Brightwing to keep everyone alive. She has some great healing potential, so it's possible, but... It's, it's interesting. It is a weird pick. We normally see the double warrior. We're going to see instead an Illidan come in here for Twisted Fusion. But that doesn't mean that Twisted Fusion is going to be completely out just because they're going against the meta. This is the wonderful place of Heroes of the Storm where you can go counter meta and and actually do pretty well. And that's something like what we see over here in NA with two arc doing all the time. So I'm very curious to see what they're going to be doing here in terms of actually getting their last pick up here now they're thinking a little bit they've got 25 seconds actually it looks like it froze there we go 20 seconds to pick up their last pickup and that is going to be a question that's going to be like what do we do here Mm-hmm. they've left i like that they've left the option open here for their damage dealer so that allows them to try to counter whatever twisted fusion throws at them and now it's going to be over i'm waiting for it to pop up what will it be i don't Austin. see it do you see it False dad. Nice. It's going to be a crispy taco on SK side. Can they yes. pull it off? We'll have to see. They've got the Anubarak as well to burrow in on top of that. So that could be uh, a lot of damage right in the face of Twisted Fusion. But I'm still just, I'm, I'm really excited about Zagara. <laughs> as you should be. Zagara is going to be a really nice pickup. We haven't seen the Zagara just yet. And I believe we see it a lot more in the NA meta as, as opposed to the EU. But... Maybe Twisted Fusion has something crazy up their sleeve, and they're going to creep out a new meta over into the EU with Zagara. I'm really excited to see this, though. I am as well. Oh. Oh, I was going to... You were going to be playing. I'm fine with You were going to be playing for SK Gaming. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I mean, it looks like they could use it. <laughs> they need somebody who can play a Diablo, but they don't have a Diablo in this in this draft, so I don't like this. No, and and Rave, I believe, is is their support. Wait, hold on. Did I actually not get thrown into? It says you're here. Hold on. No, but okay. I'm actually an observer now because I was actually for some strange reason on SK. I would have been okay. You would have had to play Malfurion. How do you feel about that? That. Uh, not too really confident Great. actually. Not yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't think uh, me and Malfurion really get along too well. In fact, I tweeted out last night, I've learned that me and supports do not get along too well. Uh, I think I'm, I'm better off on an assassin, a specialist, or a warrior. Literally everything else except for support. My support is very lackluster. That's I forget right, to we heal. all have our strengths. We yeah. all have our strengths. I have my weaknesses. And weaknesses. Yeah. But anyway, we've got this really cool drafting coming up for both these teams. SK mm -hmm. Gaming has a lot more of the standard meta. But T uh, Twisted Fusion's got something a little bit more crazy. Uh, why do I see Tastar? Nah, it's probably they're just waiting to pick up something, or it could be a bug, or it could be a billion different fi uh, things with this with this client so far. Because Tastar is readied. Hmm. I don't know. That, uh, Tass? It says he's all in, so I think I guess it's... we're going. I guess we're going in with the Tassadar. <laughs> well, it said he was offline, too, so it might have just been a bug for us. Okay. Like... Well, I guess we'll see when we're in the game. But it's possible maybe it, the portrait was wrong. That's what I'm saying. There could be a bug in the, in the client, just like how nothing actually lines up as it should. But we'll see. Maybe we have a Tassadar. It's going to be a fun day. <laughs> Tassadar would make sense to the Odin, but... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's take a look on into the main screen. Do we have a Tassadar? No, we don't. We do. 
We okay. don't have an Illidan. Oh, we do. We do have a Tassadar. Instead of Illidan. Waybridge was, uh, uh... Oh, picking site bugged. They picked a Tassadar instead of an Illidan. Oh. Got oh. it. All right, cool. So, we are into this game. Awesome. I just shook the screen a whole bunch. I'm really sorry about that. Cool. Um, anyway, so taking a look at this team on the left hand side, it is Twisted Fusion, Waybridge on Tassadar, Zafman on the Brightwing, Azul's on Zagara, Weezer on Thala, and up here in the top lane, we've got Jumaru on the Muradin. And playing for SK Gaming is Rave, TGN on Malfurion, Kiefer's on the Tyrael, Bakery playing Jaina, and Snitch is on the Falstad, with Zarmni playing Anubarak. Awesome. Wait, there are casters? <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of a discussion about this. This is great. Awesome. Anyway, so, anyway, guys, while we're waiting for this game to start spinning up, let's get all of our friends in here. Of course, tweet out, Facebook, tell your dog, I don't even care. Go <laughs> and tell them all to tune in to twitch.tv slash gamers because it's going to be SK Gaming versus Team Fusion in the semifinals. And coming on after this is going to be the finals best of three for who's going to go on into Gosu Cup number two. Sorry, so it looks like so, fa so far the party lane is on bottom as we've got three three members for each team down here. Sometimes you'll see the red team try to have three up top as you want to have three going where the golem is going to push. But they're content to just stop this push from getting out of hand as they do have to face a Zagara down here. And her push potential is great as a specialist. Yes, yeah, she's got a lot of ability to just kind of keep this lane completely pushed up. She's also picked up Reconstitution at level 1, which is going to allow her to have ridiculous amount of sustain whenever she's standing on that creep. She's going to get so much health back. And Azul's is going to be partnered with Zafman and Tassadar. So their sustainability in this lane is absolutely ridiculous. But looking on into the mid lane, Kiefer's absolutely harassing Weezer out of the lane pretty well. Doing a good amount of damage. Can Kiefer's actually get an experience advantage out of that? Because they're going to be taking a huge amount of losses in that bot lane. Interesting pick here for Brightwing getting Arcane Precision. So looking to deal a little bit more damage there instead of getting a scouting drone like we might see or even the bribe as well. Yeah, that's actually a pretty interesting thing to see because normally we see scouting drone on this map because mm -hmm. it's really really strong to be able to just kind of see where the enemy team is when it comes to tribute time but arcane precision it looks like this might be the setup for the wombo when it comes out of the maw that could be it bakery coming in wanting to catch weezer out here does get a good cone of cold will keepers be able to get her does do so with an excellent eldrin's might there's the first blood pickup by sk gaming yeah, it's going to be a really nice pickup for them, as long as they can continue to get all the experience of this lane. Tassadar is going to make his way up here, make sure that they're going to continue getting all this. Level 4 has been grabbed by both these teams, and now we're going on into the first tribute. Who's going to move down? Who's going to do what? That's going to be the question. It's in the bot lane. Azul's going to go down at the last second. Bakery making a lot of damage, but it looks like that's actually not going to be able to spell a kill here for Twisted Fusion. And with this first tribute phase, the the uh, respawn timers are very, very low. So Zagara should be able to get back in here as long as her teammates are able to stop it. Looks like both tanks right now up top are content to stay there. Tassadar is going to start channeling. So SK, if they want to stop, that, have got to get in there pretty quick. Are going to take some damage from the Psionic Storm to do so, though. And Bakery on Jane is getting rather low. Yeah, they've got to kind of stay back for a little bit more time. Zagara throwing down more of these roaches, just kind of doing more of that passive sustained damage. Now fearon has got to heal and... Just keep everybody alive, but he's got a full mana bar, so he can stay here all day. Brightwing, though, a little bit lower, but she's got her passive trait. Level 6 for both these teams, so we're not going to be seeing those level 7 regenerative rains coming out from Brightwing either. They just got to rely on the passive, and it looks like Twisted Fusion is going to be able to take the first tribute of the game and continue pushing this bot lane. Oh, Zarmini Burrow charges underneath the gate, but is now stuck in a bit of an issue. And now I wonder if we're going to see Twisted Fusion try to get up here. It looks like Tassadar is trying to get up here. Zarmini is getting very low, trying to take out the gate. Just needs his Burrow back up and will <laughs> actually go down. <laughs> oh, that was unfortunate. Uh, he was he was just, there was no winning there. There was no spot where he could just sit there and wait for his Burrow charge to come back up. Even though the other tower was out of ammo, that was... Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> well, both teams now have level 7 talents, and it looks like Zagara is still going for the creep build, picking up that endless creep there. So she's going to be covering the map quite a bit. That'll really help with vision. It'll also help make sure that she's not e as easily caught out because she will be moving faster on it and being able to regenerate a bit better on it as well. 
and that's just so much vision that's going to be out on this map, and it's just going to be so frustrating for the enemy team to try and clean it up. But Weezer getting the HBON pretty harshly here, and that is going to be a kill over on SK Gaming's side. So they're going to be able to sit in a really nice advantage of 5v4. But the question is, they've got pretty hurt team members all around. Are they going to be able to grab this tribute? It looks like they're going to hand it over, yes, to SK Gaming. So now we will be at a 1-1 in terms of Tribute Snitch dealing quite a bit of damage here on bottom, picking up this tower and trying to protect this giant so that they can get the next one. And looks like team members are going to start murking up a bit, trying to get some minions out there, pushing while the next Tribute spawns. And that's going to be exactly what they need to do. They need to start pushing and forcing their enemies to make all these weird decisions. Both these teams sitting now, right now, at one tribute each. So next tribute is going to be a really nice contention point, but it's not going to be a huge one. So getting your enemy to have to force a couple of members to go deal with a couple of bruisers is going to allow you to kind of take a little bit more confident tribute. The question here is, whose bruisers are actually going to win here? Because both of them picked up bruisers at the same time. <laughs> that is a good question. There are giants pushing up top and they've done a ton of damage, taking out one of the turrets already, but Jumanji was way overextended and a great rotation from Bakery and Zarmini is going to ensure that they are able to pick up that kill. So now they've evened up the experience lead that they the giants have gotten them with the turrets and now they're even going to maybe get 10 first with a pickup on the tower. Yeah, and this is really nice. Look at this push going on into the mid lane as well. It looks like there's not much that SK can really do. They did get that kill. They did get a little bit of that map presence, but it didn't really spell out into them being able to do that much. But it looks like they're still able to come in here and contest this with Zarmini throwing down the spikes in order to actually lure them away. The question is, they have a huge choke point they have to go through. Are they going to be able to make it through? Yeah, this is a really difficult one for them to try to engage into. That was a great hammering, though, and impale. But that means both of those are down while Brightwing is still channeling. There's a great frostbolt as well, and here comes Zarmini. He's going to step back a little bit. There was a great psionic storm there in the zone a little bit. But there is the judgment into the hinge of the blast, but doesn't catch anybody in there. Is the devouring maw as well. So many people in there. Keeper's getting very, very low, maybe going down. There's a good shield on him. And there's the tranquility keeping everyone alive so far. And now they're going after Muradin. The rotation coming out here from SK Gaming is absolutely phenomenal. Nobody's dying just yet. Zarmini is so low, but as well, Twisted Fusion keeping everybody alive at the same time. The fighting between both these teams, but everybody's getting so incredibly low. This could easily turn either way. Kiefer's going to go down. The Anubarak goes down. Jumaru is going to be the last one to go down as well. Waybridge has to fend off the rest of this with Weezer. But Stitch is going to go down. The Hungering Arrow last strike is going to finish him off. Rage TGN and the Jaina are the only ones left here. Bakery did go back. Did he actually die? I didn't actually catch that. No, I don't believe, no, Bakery did not die. He did have to just go back. He was just too low. And that is going to allow for the second tribute for our friends over at Twisted Fusion. That means SK Gaming's got a really big question up on their minds when it comes to the next tribute. Do they stop the curse or do they do something else? Man, that was a crazy close team fight. I can't believe how close it was. Some of the heroics we saw out there, we do have the Archon Devouring Maw, Avatar straight from Vala, and then the Blink Heal on the side of Twisted Fusion. But SK has picked up the Water Elemental Judgment and Hinterland Blast, two parts of the Crispy Taco, and there is the Judgment, but a great Blink Heal from Bright Brightwing means Safin's going to be able to get away no problem. And now Judgment is, uh, is down for 70 seconds. He does have battle momentum to try and turn that around, but it doesn't matter. It looks like SK Bakery's gonna go down here, and that's gonna be a huge loss because the next tribute is up here. Twisted Fusion is sitting at a really nice map advantage right now. They're going pretty ham in on, on this fort, though. Kiefer's pretty low in health. The Entangling Root's gonna lag up Jumaru, but that's not gonna be enough. Zarmi trying to use his beetles in order to lag out this tribute. Can they get the Jaina back here in time? They've got to hold out for a long enough time, though, and that's going to be a huge, huge issue here. Looks like that's not going to happen. Azul's is going to be able to pick up that tribute. Oh! No! At the last second, Snitch is able to get his boomerang in there and do some more damage. But they're taking so much damage. Zuffman trying to channel this tribute. Can they get it? There's the boomerang yet again, <laughs> lagging this out. Keepers taking a lot of damage. Oh, my God. This is going to be one of those fights, isn't it? It, I think it is. Jaina is back. Bakery's heal all healed up. 
and Zafman once again gets stopped from the hammering. Jumaru getting so low, has to dwarf toss away. They've got to stop it. And once again, Brightwing leaves. They're getting so, so close, but it's so hard to try to engage into this choke here. They've got to be really, really careful. SK Gaming know that they've got to be careful. There's the healing ward. It is done. It is down. And now, once again, they're trying to channel. They're trying to get in here. They're trying to do something. It looks like Anubarak is going to be the target here. Zarmody going to be able to get out of here, though. And Bakery just trying to pick away. They still have a Tranquility up. They have the ability to sustain through this. But level 13 is on the cusp here for Twisted Fusion. If they pick this up, it's going to be a huge talent. And while they're lagging this out, they pick up a fort down bot lane because of the Siege Giants they picked up earlier. So that means they're almost 13, but they weren't able to stop Zafman from getting that. And now there's a huge engagement. There goes the Judgment. Avatar is getting so, so low and will go down. There goes Murid. And Hinterland Blast does a lot of damage to Weezer, who is strafing away as well. Throwing a lot of damage on Zarmini. Tassadar will be the next to go down. That's kind of crazy. A good Polymorph on Anubarak gets him away, but it's not quite enough to save the Vala. And now Brightwing will go down as well. Only Zagara remains to be able to, to push with this curse. Wow, that was a re ridiculous team fight here for SK Gaming. They were just so patient. They need to go defend this top lane, but they got a four person wipe out of that coming out of the tribute. That's going to allow them to really mitigate the damage of this tribute, this curse I should say, and allow them to kind of just e even everything back up. In fact, take a pretty nice advantage in terms of experience. They need to start taking down a couple more forces though. They did get that bot lane. Yeah, they, and they've got the bot lane, but their top lane fort has gone down. So really right now, it's the same in terms of structures. So that's really nice for them. They're cursed. They've wasted all of the tributes of their of their opponents and haven't lost any more forts because of it. That They've got to be feeling really great about that as now they're up 1-0 or er, in the tributes. Yeah, and this is going to be a really nice pickup here for Twisted Fusion at least because they can get up this boss. If they can get this boss and quickly make their way over before SK is able to clean up theirs, then this might be a really huge victory. But it's a bit of a distance and SK's already started their boss. They have. It's already halfway down and it doesn't look like Twisted Fusion is trying to go up there just yet. They're trying to take vision here. They might even go for these Siege Giants so that there's a good, strong push on bottom, knowing that their push on mid will have to be dealt with as that fort is already pretty low. But the boss is wailing straight on fort here. Yeah, and this is actually a pretty nice victory here for Twisted Fusion because they already took out that, uh, took the Siege Giants down here and everything else. Everything that's coming out here from SK, they've got it. It's gonna go through a fort. Meanwhile, this Grave Golem is going to be backed up with these Siege Giants. They're not going to be able to go over to SK to help defend. They have to sit here and defend these, this Grave Golem. They might even go for Bruisers. Yeah, it looks like both teams will get a fort off of the Grave Golem. So, really nice for them both, but SK has the advantage in terms of experience, so it's going to help them a bit more. They're almost to those level 16 talents, so those very pivotal ones. Yeah, this is going to be, I think we're going to start seeing a couple of those Blood for Bloods come in here, and that's going to be really nice for them, trying to melt away that Muradin, who's been just kind of a pain in their thorn in their side this entire time. Uh, the question I guess I have at this point is what is Twisted Fusion going to do? They have to start soaking in a bunch of different lanes in order to stay alive and really kind of fight their way back into getting that level 16 talent. Keepers, and it looks like the rest of the might of SK Gaming trying to force down this mid uh, this mid fort. Well, level 16 is there for SK. They've got two Blood for Bloods and they overdrive on Falstad for a lot of damage. Jaina actually picking up Numbing Blast instead of that Northern Exposure. So going for getting more Roots, more more Crowd Control. They know they have the damage and they want to go for more of the Crowd Control as they also had that Deep Chill. And they're going after this Fort. Well, we have an engagement here as well. That's going to be the question here. They don't really have a ton of things working out for them right now, SK. They do have a scouting drone that's going to be scouting things that they already see, but that's about <laughs> it. They've got the beetles, they've got their sustainability, they still have tranquility as well, so they can sustain through something. They just have to watch out for those maws. Those maws are going to ridiculously destroy them if they catch the same amount of people they caught in that first fight we saw them all. Yeah, that's for sure. Now we have a tribute spawning, and their opponents are not yet 16 still. A great scouting drone as well. It looks like they're going to try to wait, but I think their opponents are just going to maybe give that one up, try to maybe steal these bruisers so that we've got a good push here, and get their level 16s before they get into any sort of engagement. Oh, I really like this call from SK Gaming. They're deciding, hey, our opponents are going to go for those bruisers. That's going to be a good amount of time for us to come in here and start taking out these keep towers. That's going to be a huge liability later on. Especially if they pick up a Grave Golem at a later point.
these keep towers being down, uh, down is going to allow that Grave Dome to go straight on into that keep. Zafman trying to push with these bruisers a little bit and going to get uh, probably a tower down here in front of this keep. But now we have a fight going on. Zarmany is being chased a little bit and they threw down a good route but doesn't catch anybody as Jumuro is able to jump right over that. There goes the judgment on Jumuro actually gets hit a lot by the Hinterland Blast. Will he go down? He's so close. Yes, he will go down. And now they're working on Weezer who is being body blocked to eternity by Zarmany. So good. Ice block. They're on the uh, the bright wing, but it's not going to be enough as a great route will make sure that she's not going anywhere and Waybridge even being chased down. Prescient's kicking in, but Snitch with an awesome body block with barrel roll. They're going to be able to take him out too in a four for zero. They're going to go after this keep. Yeah, this is actually potentially going to be a little bit more than a keep if they get a good enough lead on this. It's taking a little bit of time though for this keep to go down. They've got 14 seconds before that bird is going to pop back up here. It looks like, yeah, they're just going to be able to get this keep and back away. They don't have enough damage to really chew through too much of this of the structures here. But they can get a couple more towers out of this and just get a little bit more of that lead. Go for 20 as soon as they can. Well, now they've got a curse too. And this is going to mean that the lanes are going to push themselves. But they're going to be able to pick up both those towers on and on the way out grab this fort as well. And that's a ton of experience. Yes, their opponents have level 16s now. Yes, it would be great for them if they could get an engagement as their uh, opponents are a little bit low maybe in terms of mana, but they're ve getting very, very close to 20, and that's just going to be another hurdle they'll have to cross. Yeah, and not only that, but Gilly, we got Grave Golems popping up in the next 25 seconds. We've got the first one going to be in that bot lane. Bot lane's already taken out. It's already got trip, uh, catapults pos uh, pushing down that lane. And with the Grave Golem popping up, if that Grave Golem is going to be the next contention point, that's going to be a huge thing that Twisted Fusion has to fight off. If they don't have 20, if that's when that fight's going to be, it's going to be a pretty big fight for them to have to win. But there's another Grave Golem popping up in the top lane as well, and that's going to go straight on into another keep. Yeah, that's right. There's a keep up on each side there for the team, but... Bottom lane will be the problem, will be the contention point, like you said, because pushing in with a Golem, they could easily go for core there and win, especially if they're able to take out a couple members of Twisted Fusion in that fight over Golem. And here go SK immediately here. They're not yet 20, though. They still need a little bit, and I think they know this. They're trying to posture around it, now trying to start the, the, uh, the fight, but I think we'll see them back up a bit as they know their opponents are on their way. Yeah, but if they can force their opponents to go through that small little choke point right here, it's going to be a huge win for them. But it looks like right now they're perfectly content with just letting this up. They can go defend top and then take their own Grave Golem. And if they see that their opponents are turning around and possibly not even doing this, they can sit there and watch the tab screen. If they start to see Siege, da uh, siege damage go up, that means that their opponents are doing this, the Grave Golem over here. But they can use their own time while they know that they're doing the Grave Golem to take out their own Grave Golem and get that pushing in the top lane and defend these Siege Giants before they start doing any damage to their own keep. Yeah, choosing to go with a little bit of the safer route. They know they're so close to 20 and why engage at 19 when they can do so with a talent advantage. Those storm talents are so strong. You have Bolt and all sorts of crazy things like Hardened Shield, so good. So it looks like a noob right now is gonna go back and defend these giants. The fort is rather low, so they do not, or the keep, my bad, <laughs> so low. They don't wanna lose that, but the rest of them are going to start pushing with this golem. But this means there's only four people here as a noob is trying to catch up at this point. Well, the Grave Golem is at least a pretty nice body to be standing around because it soaks so much damage as well as does those nice little things like the roots, it does the slam, etc. If they can get the, their opponents into that, here comes the Nubarak coming back into the fight. It looks like the Crispy Taco is not going to go down because Snitch was getting engaged upon pretty hard. But the Malfurion gets caught in the Maul, that means they don't have that much healing. Here comes the Tranquility Pop. There is Keepers using his Ice Block in order, or sorry, Baker using his Ice Block to stay alive for a little bit longer. Waybridge going to go down here. They're going to lose three members already, and it looks like SK Gaming trying to push forward. Can they turn this into the victory that they want so desperately and go on into the finals? That's going to be the question. They've got all five of their members up, and a Grave Golem chewing through a Keep, and they're going straight for the core. Yeah, they skipped right over the core. They knew they didn't need to. There was already a keep down. They skipped right over the keep. And now they're at core. They're trying to throw a little bit of damage on the other members. But no, they, they really just need to distract them so that they're able to keep their squishies alive enough to throw down a bunch of damage, take out the core. And once again, SK are dominating this series. They have taken so many victories so far. But now it comes up to...